All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And yes, we just finish up. We just wrap up with our newspaper uh, Tori segment. And I did with me, uh, Ezuku Chukudi. We talk about the things where they trend on top of the newspaper. And yes, we don't deliver them to now. I tell you, I say, for those who now we don't get the opportunity to get the newspaper, we'll go bring them fresh and hot to your living room. I believe, say, you don't take that one. Now, I promise when I say I get better interviews today via Skype. And I'm going to be doing our first interview with uh, BC Ozo Unyale, the founder of the uh, Steam Empowerment Foundation. Yes, uh, this is She's also the CEO of Attainable Entertainment Limited that runs as a fun learning educational support company which specializes in constructive and educating entertainment for children. Now, good morning, Ms. Bissi, and uh, welcome to the show this morning. Good morning, Henry. How are you doing this morning? All right. How, how, how are you doing, madam? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a culture on the show that we always ask our guests uh, uh, to, to actually know. It's also a culture in our guests always know how our guests are doing. We ask you honestly. We know that there's a pandemic, and uh, we like to know exactly how you are doing honestly. So how are you, madam? I am very well, thank you. We're fine. We're trying to keep safe. I like that. I like that. So looking at the current situation of the world, do you think uh, we're ever going to get back to the expected normal or the normal we used to know again, judging from the way you see things? Well, there's a possibility we can get back to normal. Mm -hmm. We might just take a long road to that, but it's still very possible. I like that. I like the fact that you were very honest with it. It will take a long road to that. The long road the emphasis on that long road. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about STEAM education and uh, what it's really all about. So for the uh, regular person who is just watching us and doesn't understand what it is, can you just give us a quick breakdown of what this is about? Okay, well, it's, so we're talking about STEAM education. Mm -hmm. Globally, that seems to be the trend. But however, good news is Nigeria is trying to catch up on this. Sometimes last week, there was, uh, there was an interview that the Minister of State granted, and he was saying, oh, they're going to see how they can embed STEAM into Nigeria's curriculum, mm -hmm. which is very exciting to hear. Because globally, this is the trend. What is the concept of STEAM? STEAM is actually science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And this is the process that global economies are using in teaching their children. If, for, for example, in our own environment, what we're conversant with is, oh, we teach theoretical, and then the children have the knowledge, but they do not know how to translate it into practical reality. Yeah. And that's what STEAM education is all about, mm -hmm. trying to see how we can translate the theoretical knowledge we have into practical reality. Thereby, we move, and the whole concept is we want to move our own children, our own society from being a consuming economy to a producing economy. Hmm. Steam Club is actually a project-based learning. The concept is you're working with hands-on, you're, you're involved in hands-on experiments, practicals that gives reality hmm. to to the theoretical things we learn in school. Yes. We're trying to give life to the average knowledge we acquire at school. So that's really the concept of STEAM, being able to see everything from the perspective of STEAM. And the concept is project-based, hands-on. We do real models that are pertinent to the world today. But in the real sense of it, we're teaching children in a fun way, a way and manner they can relate to. But they feel they're having fun but they're gaining exposure to modern technology. And through this, by consistently indulging in this, what we're, we're stirring up in our children is we're raising them to become innovators and inventors. If you can think it, you, you can, can do, do it. it. Okay. If you can play with it, it can become a reality. Because when you look at the global economy and you look at an average child abroad, they look to be, they, they seem to be way off ahead of us. Hmm. But it's not that they're any better than us. But well, it's just that they're exposed to this concept at a very tender age. So they just grow up thinking outside the box. They grow up being able to use their mind. They grow up being able to experiment. They grow up being able to give expression to a number of things they see around them. And then at the end of the day, we have those Western world raising young children that are innovators and inventors. And the only thing we have with our own children is that they see, they have the knowledge, but they do not know how to translate it into reality. So what we are trying to do as an organization 
is to see how from a very tender age we can push this consciousness into our children that you can become innovators, you can become inventors. We want to raise our own Michael Faraday, we want to raise our own Thomas Edison, and that is the whole concept of STEAM education, practical hands on. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I, I like the fact that uh, you decided to, uh, the foundation decided to push this as uh, a movement. But looking at uh, the current situation of our educational sector, wouldn't you say that the reason why our students are not practical hands-on when it comes to uh, receiving the knowledge is because we are not fully equipped with these practical um, uh, things that we need, practical equipment needed to be practically hands-on? Like uh, to take, for example, if, uh, like you said, we know the, the, the theoretical part of it, but to put it into uh, practice, we don't do that. But would you just say that the reason why that doesn't happen is because of the infrastructure not being available? Okay, thank you, Henry. Yes, there, there's a place of infrastructure, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But most of the things that we use, we as a foundation are actually everyday things that we see and we handle. Okay. I feel is first of all, a perspective issue. We just see ourselves that we cannot do a lot of things, and then we tend to tilt towards being consumers. Okay. In the, the, we have the place, we have the problem of the infrastructure, no doubt. But however, beyond the infrastructure... Oh, well, I think we're having a bit of network issues, but I'm sure we'll be able to... Okay, fine. I think we're back. All right. Are you with me, madam? Yes. All right. Yes, I Let's am. Let's go on. Let's go on. Go ahead. So it has a lot to do with our mindset. Okay. We just want our children to acquire knowledge. They have a, loads of information, but they do not know how to give expression to this information. But if from a tender age, they are allowed to use their hands, they are allowed to experiment, they are allowed to try a lot of things out, then the consciousness is built into them that they can really become, they can become innovators, they can become inventors. Hmm. That consciousness, that orientation, that mindset, First of all, we have to create because it is what you see that you can give expression to. So if you keep on saying, oh, we do not have infrastructure in Nigeria, the environment is not enabling, things do not work, hmm. then we will never move out of where we are. Yes, the, 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 the environment is not enabling, things are not ideal, but even in the present state where we are in, we can make something out of it. For me, I believe the journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. With a single first step. So okay. while in this their tender age, while we'll allow them to, yes, they are real, most of the things we use are actually the everyday things that we see, we undo, we pass by, but we never give attention to. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Uh, so I would like to ask, uh, for people who are watching now, can you just run us through uh, a bit of the difference between the STEAM education and the traditional education that we are used to? Because we know that uh, there's, this is how um, we've been running our educational system for quite a long time. So if you can give us, uh, the, what, what is the, the, the differentiating factor from the STEAM education program you're talking about to, with the regular traditional conventional educational system that we have? The major difference is that STEAM is project-based. Okay. That is the major difference. You experiment, you, you play around, you work with, hmm. as against just learning and acquiring knowledge that you can give expression to. STEAM is a way of giving expression to the things you learn. Mm -hmm. So the difference is actually the project-based. Working with materials, working with equipment, working with tools, working with appliances. So it's, it's like the practical aspect of whatever we learn in theory. Is that yes. the idea? The but practical however, aspect. Hmm. But so, however, emphasis is more on the practical aspect than on the theoretical. Because yes. the things you undo, the things you play with, your, the things you experiment with, mm -hmm. you are likely to retain it better than the things that you just learned. And you are, it's easier to give expression to these things yes. when you play with them, when you fiddle with them, mm -hmm. when you work on them. Mm. Okay, so we're looking at uh, what age range is this uh, uh, program running by the children? What age range? Within what age to what age range? Actually, as, as funny as it might sound, 
we have this uh, phrase, catch them young. Okay. You can start as early as three years and you can keep learning till you are 60. Hmm. Because you can become an innovator and an inventor at any age. All you need is exposure. All you need is to allow your imagination run wild. And all you need is to have interest in science, technology, engineering, apps and traps and mathematics. And everybody can be accommodated. It's actually, you know, another beautiful thing about STEAM is actually giving an entrepreneurship dimension mm. to learning, becoming a producer, becoming a manufacturer, STEAM beyond consumption and raw materials. Mm. Okay. All right. It's, it's a good thing that uh, we decided to have this conversation because um, a lot of times we compare our Nigerian students to uh, the students abroad. And I believe that the reason why uh, we have not been so much of a, product, a production industry or a country is because we are not used to this practical aspect of education. And uh, right now, putting this in place, it's something that it's, it's, it's a new um, innovation and it should be acceptable. But speaking about acceptability, uh, how has it been so far uh, to the Nigerian people? Seeing the fact that this is started, how has the reception been so far? Well, well, I will say at the moment, if you look at it, for an average enlightened and exposed Nigerian, it's easier to accept. Okay. And to them, because of the level of exposure and interaction with the Western world, an average Nigerian is able to accept this based on your level of exposure. But however, for an average person, it looks attractive it looks interesting but it's not very affordable and that is the significance of our foundation we're trying to see oh how we can make this av uh, available to an average nigerian irrespective of your pedigree your estate or your status in life and in most developed country what has been able to push steam to a large extent is that governments and corporate bodies have been given a lot of support because they know for any economy to be able to evolve from a consuming hmm. from a consuming economy to a producing economy, a lot of emphasis has to be given to STEAM. And it has to start from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So if you see in America, a lot of investment is being made, a lot of support is being given to STEAM education especially now that the American government, they are feeling threatened that the Asians are taking up most manufacturing, they're taking up the global economy through their massive production. Yes. So they themselves, they're not placing a lot of emphasis on their children and their students being interested in STEAM. So there's a lot of funding, there's a lot of support going on over there so that they can be able to stay at the lead. Hmm. But in Nigeria, at least it's, 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 it's um, exciting and it's pleasant news to hear the Minister of, um, Minister of Education, Minister of State for Education, saying last week that they're going to, they're going to see how they will embed STEAM education into our curriculum. Okay. So for me, I feel that is a good start. Yeah, I was, for them I, to think of that. Yeah, I was going to ask that, that uh, is it something that's going to be embedded in our school's uh, curriculums? But as you said that, that is uh, good information and uh, good knowledge regarding. But uh, we, we want to know how uh, it works. Is it a, is it, a, is, it a, is it a free program? Is it, do, do, do students have to, you know, pay to register? Is it, is it, let's know how that works for the, for the you know, indigent uh, Nigerian citizen, knowing that they don't have the funds. Like you said, it's quite expensive. They don't have the funds, but how can they partake in this uh, program, like you said? Okay, well, one of the things we did in the course of last year was that we trained about 300 teachers. Okay. For about 300 teachers in STEAM education for free. All right. Which is one of the things we believe in is that if we're able to create that consciousness in teachers and we're able to get them to the level where they start thinking STEAM, it will go a long way in the way and manner they communicate with children in their different schools. But another way, too, that we can get this across, which we're already doing, is that we're partnering with some big organizations okay. to make this available in public schools. The, the organization, through their own corporate social responsibility, 
will, will stand in between us and the different schools, paying for the resources and making this education available to the poor and to the less privileged. Mm. Then equally for those people that can afford it, we have existing platform whereby children and parents can enroll the children to come on board and have exposure to this. Hmm. Interesting. So you've, you've been able to at create... Least at the moment, we've yeah. worked with well over 50 schools in both Lagos and Abuja on a private level. But now we're going beyond working with private schools to reach out to public schools, which is where the government and the corporate individuals come to play. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's, that's quite interesting, seeing how you've been able to take, uh, looking at taking and expanding the reach to be able to cater for the, uh, the, the young children or students who can't really afford this. And we're hoping that uh, the, the government and the, and the necessary sectors get to imp infuse in that. But as STEAM as it is, um, what alternatives have you provided for your clientele base and, uh, and, and their children, your clients and their children? What alternatives have you, um, you know, provided for them? seeing the situation like i can decide for is it possible for a parent to decide if his child wouldn't you know partake in the program if uh, the school requests that they always do it or is it is it something that they don't have a choice to do if the school approves it already i would like to know okay in a number of schools where we've worked it's always been optional okay based on affordability as in based on the fact that oh your parents is interested or the child is interested and the parents enroll the child. Mm -hmm. But in the public school, when you have a corporate organization or the government funding it, mm -hmm. then it becomes mandatory for every child to enroll because it's already paid for. It's already paid Actually, for. STEAM education is not something that ought to be restricted to either the rich or the poor, the privileged or the underserved. It's actually something every child in any ideal society should have access to because mm -hmm. All children, irrespective of their background and their upbringing, have a lot of potentials. And all that you simply have to do is to find those potentials, and there are no limits to what these children can become. So it's not something that is meant to be restricted to a category of people. But because it's a very expensive venture, most people cannot afford it. Hmm. But however, in schools where we've worked over the years, you see a lot of children showing interest and participating in it because of the enormous benefits that it gives to children. It actually gives you an edge. It broadens your horizon mm -hmm. and it makes you see things from the perception of being a producer as against being a consumer. You know, for example, the way it used to be years back, we, we produce cocoa, yeah. and then the next thing we do with our cocoa, we send it abroad. And a nation like Switzerland that is not producing anything Make the best chocolate out of the cocoa. What stops us as a nation from producing the cocoa, processing the cocoa, mm -hmm. and equally having finished product that we can sell globally? True, true. Quite, quite so interesting. This is the, so the whole essence is to bridge that gap between production and the end product, whereby every child, when you, when you undo anything, mm -hmm. you're holding on to anything, or you're seeing anything, you're seeing finished product, how can I make this to become something more productive? How can I make this for the benefit of the society? How can I turn this raw material into a finished product that can be used by both uh, by, by people, both locally and mm -hmm. internationally? Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So now, the but... whole essence of STEAM yeah. is just to make our children to become inventors, innovators, and to become manufacturers. Inventors, innovators, and manufacturers. Now, that's we've had a very, very uh, insightful conversation. But I would like to ask, seeing that we're in a pandemic right now and uh, a lot of things have uh, been on halt, uh, how does this work? Is it still going to be? Is it going to be learning online, or how does it work now? Seeing that we can't, we can't have our students in schools uh, moving forward for now. Okay, thank you. Well, one of the things we're working on, and we will be launching come August first is that children, at least most of the children that have worked with us over the years, mm -hmm. will be able to have access to the online platform. And for every child that enrolls, you will have packages delivered to your, to your homes. And in the comfort of your home, 
you can still experience the same education without having to be in the different classes. So we're bringing the experiences of the classes to the different families that can enroll and be a part of it. So you will have pre-cut material delivered to your homes, and then you follow through once you enroll, you come online and you log in with your registered details, and then you're able to benefit and go through the same things you will ordinarily go through if you were to be in school. Interesting. All right. Uh, so come thank on you. Us, we're launching the platform so that children can still enjoy the benefit of STEAM Club in the of from the comfort of the homes. Okay, interesting. That's uh, it, we've been. Uh, it's been a very, very insightful conversation. And just to clear, make it clear again uh, for people who are watching, what does Steam stand for? So they understand we've been speaking Steam a lot, and they realize what is this Steam we're talking about. So what does the Steam stand for? Again, just for clarification. Okay, Steam stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And let me say one, one word. You know, in most uh, in, in, the, in the advanced nations, initially they started with what we call STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Okay. But over the years, they've been able to realize that it shouldn't only be restricted to children and students that have interest in the sciences. In the sciences, yes. The arts, the humanities should be accommodated. Mm -hmm. And that is why it became STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, arts and crafts, and mathematics. The arts and crafts covers for humanities so that irrespective of what your interest or your passion is, mm -hmm. you can fit into any aspect of STEAM education. All right. Thank you very much for this conversation, Matt. And uh, we appreciate the fact that you took our time to have the conversation with us today. Well, by the way, my name is Adewo, by the way. It's not Henry, but it's okay. <laughs> we decided to just get that all out of the way. Uh, we, we'll definitely have a conversation again sometime uh, soon regarding uh, the updates on this. But it's been very, very, very insightful. And thank you for your time. And thank you for having me on the platform. I really appreciate it. And I will be willing to come on board anytime you want again. All right. Thank, thank you. you and good thank you very day. much. All right. Have a lovely Bye. day. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.